north where French troops patrol, others to the German sector in the south, and the remaining troops going to the U.S. sector in western Kosovo. Uh, indeed, we have found the alternative solution which uh, will ensure such kind of deployment of the Russian military contingent that would enable it to actively participate in the uh, peace-making uh, activity there. Another plus for the Russians, Russian military commanders will be integrated into every level of the Kosovo chain of command, unlike their setup in Bosnia. They will also have military and political control within their zones of responsibility. Russian troops, like all of those who are participating in the K-4 mission, would be under the tactical control of uh, K-4. Under the agreement, however, if Russian troops refuse to carry out a NATO command, other K-4 troops or Kosovo peacekeepers can be ordered to carry it out instead. Commander for the administration of the airport and its grounds. NATO will be in charge of Kosovo airspace and airplane movements there, so that is sorted out. The first flights into Kosovo, we're told, were to be today, but now have been postponed. point of view, it is an extremely good agreement. Uh, it guarantees NATO's unity of command. There will be only one K-4 commander, and that is General Jackson. At the same time, it guarantees Russia a place at every uh, at the table at every level. Russia will have liaison officers at SHAPE, at AF South, and here in our own headquarters um, in Pristina. Russian troops turned back British peacekeepers who tried to enter the Pristina airport on Saturday morning, but the Russians later moved their roadblocks and allowed the NATO forces into the airport. The exit. Early morning in Pristina, and the KLA is trying to make a statement here. A statement that this is not the flag of a province of Serbia, but of independent Kosovo. And this is not a collection of ill-organized guerrillas, but a real army. It's an assertion that diplomats and NATO officers taking a hand in Kosovo cannot shrug off much longer. Uniformed Yugoslav forces may be gone, and NATO may be confiscating weapons from civilians where it can, but KLA officers declare that they, not NATO, are the ones in charge of protecting ethnic Albanians here. This patrol, with NATO helicopter nearby, is not the kind of scene to reassure the ethnic Serbs that they'll be safe. Disarmament will not happen. Our stand is clear. KLA is the only... Moscow to include Russian troops. Peaceful is not easy. For a start, there are a lot of weapons around. The Parachute Regiment has already relieved people in Pristina of over a hundred assorted rifles, pistols, grenades and machine guns. Normally one tends to get two or three weapons handed to you and there's normally one more that they're trying to hold in the flat. The Paras and the Irish Guards came upon one of those dangerous and bewildering scenes which show the tension between Serb and Albanian. In the main street, a pistol shot from a Serb. Reacting to it, an Albanian out of his car and clutching something. Another Serb arrives with an assault rifle, going for the Albanian, only to drop his rifle as he realizes that the Albanian has a grenade. Trying to make sense of this, the mortar troop of the Irish Guards and Sergeant Terry Meadows, who has noticed there's no pin in the grenade. A short time later, there's an explosion. Well, after I'd noticed he had a grenade in his hand, I told him to keep perfectly still until the situation that was in hand was calmed down. He did assure me that uh, he wasn't going to let go of the grenade at that point. The pin was out? The pin had already been pulled. We tried to put the pin in, but the pin snapped as we tried to uh, put it through the fly-off lever. Therefore, the grenade is in a dangerous state. What happened next? I held on to his arm, then he wouldn't run away. We went to an area where I found one or two uh, bin-type skips full of rubbish and noticed that there was a, a small hole in the ground. 
He drops it. There is, remember, a five, six second delay on the grenade exploding. We then moved to a safe area where I had already positioned a vehicle to get behind and listen to the grenade explode. Weapon. The group is permitted by the French, who do not want to see Metrovica become another Berlin, divided. But for a young man, it takes either courage or foolhardiness to cross. David Ordich, a Serb, was determined to cross the bridge to see his sister on the Albanian side. Angry Kosovar Albanians attacked him. His family pulled him back. Then he tried to pull a concealed gun from his jeans. A French soldier disarmed him. Ordich was escorted back across the river. Ethnic Albanians say the incident confirms their fears that it's not safe for them to live among Serbs here. The Serbian is not Serbian, he's a criminal who kills the children and women and old people when he's a 15-year-old yes. kid. Yes. Yes.